I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Matt Duchesne of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. I'm Ryan Johansson of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. And before we get started on the no half step in hockey coverage, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go there, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show. And once you get good and educated on the show, you can go to that merchandise tab, and that's where you're going to find our classic logo t shirt, our pride logo t shirt, all of our special event tees, and all of the gimmicks you've come to know and love from the Renegades of Puck socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets. It's all there. You cannot fit your entire home or your entire person or your, all of your friends, even with Renegades of Puck merch. We would appreciate if you would go ahead and do that very thing. We've sold out so that you can buy in social media is of critical importance to this operation right here independent hockey coverage depends on what we can do on those platforms so please give us a like give us a subscription give us a follow on some of the following platforms if not all of them you can find us on social media on instagram on twitter on tiktok and on facebook you can find us on youtube you can find us our behind the scenes streaming channel on twitch and of course you can find us on a myriad of podcast platforms like stitcher like google like spotify and several others please help us out give us a like give us a subscription give us a follow on all of those different social media and different podcasting sites we sure would appreciate that now you can become a partner of the show or just become a sponsor of the show by going to venmo search renegades of pucker scan the qr code that is currently on your screen stick taps love and respects all the generous renegades out there who've helped us out over the holiday season says you can tell over the last season we've been able to make significant upgrades here to the bunker and we would like to continue doing that we have some pretty big ambitions here as you probably already know so thank you so much to generous renegades like you out there for helping make this operation work as smoothly as it has in our second season here in video form now i know it's time to get to the no half step in hockey coverage so let me deliver the goods it's time for operation number 702 that's right operation number 702 for the Renegades of Puck. And at this moment in hockey history, the National Predators currently find themselves in fifth place in the Central Division. After 41 games played on the season, their next game will be the middle point of the season. They have a record of 19, 16, and 6. 44 points has them at one point behind fourth place St. Louis, five points behind third place Minnesota, which would be an automatic playoff spot, which again, we'll be talking about considerably more in the second half of the season. The Winnipeg Jets are in second place with 55 points. The Dallas Stars are in first place with 57 points, and that is updated after tonight's results. So it reads, Dallas in first place, Winnipeg in second place, Minnesota in third, the St. Louis Blues in fourth, then the National Purrs in fifth place, going below the National Purrs. Colorado Avalanche, because of their loss to the Chicago Blackhawks, failed to gain ground on the Preds, remained one point behind the Nashville Predators. The Arizona Coyotes, then the Chicago Blackhawks, make up the bottom of the division. The Nashville Predators' next game is on home ice. It's been some time since they've been at Bridge Stone Arena. 9-6-3 and three is the home record on the season. They've scored 115 goals. They've given up 121 against. Their goal differential then is minus 6. Their next opponent is the Buffalo Sabres. First of two meetings in the regular season between the National Predators and the Buffalo Sabres. The second will take place in Buffalo and it won't happen until March the 21st of this season. For the Preds, they have a couple of games to go before we hit the All-Star break and they have more home games coming up than you might expect. So let me go down the schedule real quick. After this game against the Buffalo Sabres on the 16th, which is Monday, that is going to be the Calgary Flames at Bridgestone Arena. Then the next night on Tuesday, the Columbus Blue Jackets will be at Bridgestone Arena. So another set of back-to-backs for the National Purs this time, though, taking place on home ice. On the 19th of January, the Preds will be in St. Louis. One game road trip there, though, because they're back home on the 21st against L.A. and the 24th against Winnipeg, the 26th against New Jersey. And that closes out the schedule for the All-Star break. The Preds have a break from the 26th until February the 7th. And of course, congratulations to UC Soros for being selected to the Western Conference All-Star team. Now for the Buffalo Sabres, they hold a record of 2018-2 and two on the season overall. That's good for 42 points and fifth place in the Atlantic Division. So two fifth place teams meeting up in this matchup. A surprisingly good road record, 11-7 and seven on the season, a plus 15 goal differential. And let's take a look at their most recent stretch of five games. Back on January 
and third coming out of the New Year's break. 5-4 overtime win at the Washington Capitals. Follow that up on the 7th of 65 overtime win versus the Minnesota Wild. A 4-0 loss versus Philadelphia on the 9th. And then on the 10th, a 4-3 loss versus Seattle. And then on the 12th, their most recent game was a 4-2 loss versus the Winnipeg Jets. So on a three-game losing streak right now are the Buffalo Sabres looking to come to Nashville and right the ship. Between these two teams, the matchups, the Buffalo Sabres are going to be favored in the majority of statistical metrics. So let's take a look at it. In goals four, you might be surprised if you haven't paid attention to what's going on in Buffalo. This is one high-scoring Buffalo Sabres team. They just haven't quite found the results overall in the standings yet, but there is no problem on the offensive side of things. Generating 3.83 goals per game, that's best overall. Number one in the NHL, while the National Players generating 2.76 goals per game is 27th in the NHL, near the bottom of the league. In goals against, National Players are 14th, best in the NHL, 2.93 per game given up, while the Buffalo Sabres are 24th overall in the NHL. They're giving up 3.48 per game. Now, shots for 32.3 on net for Buffalo is 12th best in the NHL, while the National Predators generating 31 on net per game. That is 19th overall in the NHL. And shots against Buffalo giving up 33 per game is 25th in the league, while the National Predators are rated 29th in the league, giving up 34.2 shots against per game. In the special teams matchup, power play favors the Buffalo Sabres. Fifth best in the NHL. 41 conversions on 141 eight opportunities. That's good for 20 27.7% on the power play. The National Predators power plays converted 23 times on 138 opportunities. That is 28th overall in the NHL or 16.7% conversion out of the penalty kill. The Preds are ahead of Buffalo in this metric. 14th best in the league. They've given up 30 power play goals against and they have a kill rate of 79.2% while the Buffalo Sabres are 28th overall in penalty kill, giving up 35 power play goals against and have a penalty kill rate of 72.9%. Injuries for the Nashville Predators. Cole Smith returns to the lineup. That means Mark Borowiecki is the only player listed on the injury report for the Nashville Predators. He is on injured reserve. There is no timetable for his return. Every team in the NHL has some high-skilled individuals. That's why we always go over the top five scores and the individual stats for each and every team. We will start with the home team, Nashville Predators, in this one. Philip Forsberg, 18 goals and 20 assists for 38 points on the season. Leads the Preds in scoring. The 18 goals leads the Preds in total goals. The captain, Roman Yossi, leads the team in assists with 23. He also adds 10 goals to that for 33 points. Matt Duchesne has 11 goals and 21 assists for 32 points on the season. Mikhail Granlund, 4 goals and 21 assists for 25 points. Nino Niederreiter at 13 goals and 10 assists for 23 points. In net, UC Soros has a record of 15, 11, and 5. A save percentage of 9.22 and a goals against average of 2.65, expecting him him to get the start on home ice against the Buffalo Sabres. Let's go over to the other side of the ledger and talk about those Buffalo Sabres. And again, high skill and a lot of offense from this young Buffalo Sabres roster. Thompson leads the team with goals 31 at 26 assists to that 57 points overall. Darlene, 13 goals and 34 assists. Those 34 assists lead the team, 47 points overall. Tuck has 20 goals and 25 assists for 45 points. Skinner at 17 and 24 for 41. And Cousins, 13 and 26 for 39. Craig Anderson in net, 7, 6, and 1, and 9, 21 save percentage. 2.70 goals against average. So they may be fifth place teams in each of their divisions respectively, but the Buffalo Sabres bring a considerable amount of punch into Bridgestone Arena. And the National Predators haven't seen the Buffalo Sabres in quite some time. It's the first time this season the National Predators have got to be prepared. UC Soros, I expect he will see a heavy workload on home ice against this Buffalo Sabres team. That gets you all set up for the National Predators next game at home against the Buffalo Sabres. Up next, it's Reaver sports full game recap hockey players are as unique as the game itself and your uniform should be tailored to fit you rebirth sports is your sports apparel tailor from shells bags warm-ups hats hoodies branding and more let rebirth sports be your custom hockey tailor and don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey rebirth sports on facebook twitter and instagram rebirth sport a match made in hockey 
We go all the way back to January the 12th of the year 2023, and John Hines deploys his lines in the following way. We've got Forsberg, Parson, and Sissons on your first line. Smith, Johansson, and Duchesne. So that's Cole Smith back in the lineup inserted for Jankowski. So I guess I was wrong. Jankowski did lose his job after taking that penalty in Toronto. Niederrider, Glass, and Granlin make up your third line and your checking line. Trenton, Novak, and Janot make up the fourth line. Your defensive pairings, McDonough, Yossi, Ekholm, Carey, Luzon, and Fabro, And in net, a surprise and shock start Yaroslav Askarov getting called up from Milwaukee because Lankinen with an illness could not practice the last couple of days and could not make the start so Askarov gets the call up and immediately let's go into the game 17 seconds into this highly touted highly rated prospects First start in the NHL. 17 seconds into the first period. Askarov comes up with a save on Savard. It's the first save of his NHL career. 140 into the first period. Askarov comes up with a scrambling series of saves and is able to cover the rebound. 215 into the first. Askarov comes up with a save on Yonan from the slot after Fabro turns the puck over. Montreal, five total shots on goal in the first two minutes and 15 seconds. Welcome to the NHL 20 year old netminder. 455 in to the first period. We see Montebo making his first touch of the game. A save on Luzon's long shot. First shot on the goal for Nashville. 7 12 with the first. Askroft comes with a save on Dadanoff's tip in the low slot. 801 Sissons misses the open net on a two on one. Parsons set him up perfectly. I cannot believe. Colton Sissons did not score on this opportunity. 806 of the first period. Doc is off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. Montebo has to come up with a save on Niederreiter at close range. We would see at 935, Niederreiter would get back at Montebo, though. His 13th goal of the season gives the National Predators a 1 0 lead over the Montreal Canadiens. It was a redirect at the top of the crease off of Yossi's feed. Lots of traffic there in front. Hard to tell with the amount of sticks, the amount of skates, the amount of bodies that were in the way. How that puck got into the net until you saw the super slow-mo and need a rider with the absolute great redirect right there at the top of the blue paint one nothing in favor of the national purse we go to 10 42 at the first period and that's where Askarov's back to work with a glove save on evans 12 35 Askarov working again makes numerous saves during the preds defensive scramble 12 48 we see johansson and dvorak off to the box two minutes each that leads to a four on four situation and evans with the tap in goal right here his second of the season ties the game up at one apiece we go to 13:48 of the first period. Askarov has an incredible save doing the full split to get back to the back post on Harris. Big time save right there by the rookie netminder in his first start. 13:56 of the first period at Coleman Barron now off to the box. Two minutes each. So we see another four on four scenario and the Montreal Canadiens are capitalizing again with another Globetrotter-esque highlight. Real easy goal for Doc. His seventh of the season. Askarov's clearing attempt was intercepted along the wall. The D was discombobulated all over the place and this led to an easy tap-in for Montreal. The National Predators currently find themselves down by a goal here at the end of the first period. Shots on goal, Montreal 19, Nashville 8. So welcome to the NHL and your first ever start in an emergency call-up. 19 shots against in the first 20 minutes of play. National Predators need to regroup in the locker room, come out on a fresh sheet, and that's exactly what they do. It took quite a bit of time for the first couple of seconds of this period to get played a couple of false starts on some faceoffs, but just 12 seconds in to the second period Philip Forsberg red hot as played gets his 18th goal of the season tying the game up into a piece it was Matt Duchesne's feed to the low slot and Forsberg with the easy finish of the Nashville Predators with two very similar goals in this game so far and the Preds and the Montreal Canadiens are tied at two apiece just seconds into the second period 21 seconds into the second period carries off to the box to for a puck over the glass. Strong PK from Fabro getting a big time shot block and Askarov coming out of the crease and clearing the puck for himself. Really great job on National Predators. Penalty kill you in 517 in the second period. Montebo comes up with a save on Johansson. 736. Montebo comes up with a save on Forsberg. 844. Askarov save on Suzuki. 948. Sissons off to the box. Two minutes for high sticking. This was a questionable penalty but it was deemed a penalty and the referees are the only decision and opinion that matters on this scenario. 
scenario. Caulfield would convert for Montreal's 24th goal of the season. It was a one-timer from Ovechkin's office giving Montreal a 3-2 lead. Askarov is going back to work now in the second period, now down by one. 11:41 into the second, Askarov comes up with a save on Slavkovsky at 13:04. Askarov, incredible save on Dadanov's breakaway. The edge work after being frozen but being able to react and recover. Just absolutely otherworldly right there. 14:59 of the second, Askarov comes up with a save on Anderson. 15:10, Montebo save on Duchesne after Duchesne's slick, sick drag move through the slot delay and shoot at 16:24 of the second period. Sissons cannot connect on a sure goal in front. Colton Sissons second time in this game misses what would have been a sure goal. 1656 in the second. Ascroft comes with a save on Edmondson plus the rebound scramble right there. 1946. Montebo save on Ekholm. 1949. Evans hits the post on a breakaway. 1952. Dadanoff's off to the box. Two minutes for tripping and the Nashville Predators will get a power play going into the third period. Montreal out shooting Nashville at the end of two periods. 28 to 21 and leading in the game. 3 to 2. And highly high event, high intense 40 minutes to this game. As a matter of fact, the most notes I've taken in the first 40 minutes of the game all season long. We go to the third period, carry over the National Players power play 152 into the clean sheet. Montebo is coming with a save on Duchesne. Two total shots on goal. For the Nashville Predators, we flip to the back of the sheet and we continue with 332 with the third period. Suzuki's off to the box. Two minutes for high sticking, but the Nashville Predators are going to take a penalty for too many men on the ice. Askroff was trying to spring the play into the neutral zone, and the Nashville Predators were caught in a change with seven players on the ice at this time. The four-on-four scenario has been unkind to the Nashville Predators this entire game, and being shorthanded has also been unkind to the Nashville Predators. It's a four-on-four scenario for 49 seconds, and Caulfield's putting the puck in the net for a second goal the game's 25th of the season. It was another one-timer from the left circle. Now Montreal with a 4-2 lead in the third period. 8.43 of the third. Montebo could be save on Ekholm. 11-10. Montebo another save on Luzon. You hear the shots are coming from the defenseman. That means everything is being kept to the outside by Montreal. 13-11 in the third period. Montebo comes with a save on Duchesne. 15-10. Askarov save on Evans. Keeps the National Predators within reach. 16-22. Montebo comes with a save on Trennan at the back door off of Yossi's feet. This was an incredible save by Montebo, maybe his best of the game, an incredible scoring opportunity for Trent. 18-25, Montebo comes with a save on Yossi off of the rush. The captain was looking to go end-to-end and put this back into a game play scenario, but 18-31, that's exactly what Parson does. His fourth goal of the season, it was a long shot through lots of traffic. It was a six-on-five goal with Askarov on the bench for the extra attacker. That cuts Montreal's lead to 1-4-3 now in favor of the Canadians, and the National Predators would generate some more pressure, but they would fall short at the end, ending up with 42 shots on goal, out shooting Montreal 42-35, to 35, but falling 4-3 to three in this game. So at the end of the second period, the Preds had 21 shots on goal. At the end of the game, they had 42 shots on goal. So they might have been on the second day of back-to-backs. They might have been starting to get a little bit of sluggish, but it was not the third period effort that sunk this National Predators team. It was the first period effort where they were absolutely overwhelmed by the Montreal Canadiens, leaving their young netminder making his NHL debut out to dry there in the first period. Third period effort was absolutely incredible. This Nashville Predators team put a ton of pressure on the Montreal Canadiens and came within just inches of tying this game up right before the end. So for the Nashville Predators, it's an unfortunate ending to a five-game road trip, getting off to a 3-0 start on the road trip and getting the first six points of the road trip and then losing late in Toronto last night and then falling to Montreal in this one. It's a tough, bitter ending to a road trip that I would have said before it started. Six out of ten points is perfect as long as you get more than half of the points out of the five games. That should be satisfactory. But once the National Predators started 3-0, and I just I wanted more. So it feels a little bit unsatisfying here at the end. It's a little bit disappointing, I will. And it shouldn't be because the expectations going in and the predictions going in were that if the Preds could get six points, this would be measured to be a successful road trip. That's the rebound sports full game recap you give me 10 minutes i'll give you the game you give us an additional 10 minutes we'll give you all the stats all the analysis all the information and opinions you need about the nashville predators and that's coming up next. hello 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 i'm tracy owner operator of strong style fitness and that's me and my training assistant rizzo and we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes bar inspired classes to bottle workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, 
all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been, what you were going through, and where you were going, and I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. In his NHL debut on a surprise emergency call-up, Yaroslav Askarov went 31 out of 35. He was in Arizona with the Milwaukee Admirals just yesterday. Lankinen unable to practice. He was going to be a game day decision. Obviously, he was not able to go. The report was that he was feeling under the weather or illness would probably be the more professional way to say it. So Askarov jumps on a plane from Arizona, gets to the Nashville Predators game in Montreal. He makes his NHL debut and he makes a ton of saves in the first period. He makes 17 saves on 19 shots against in the first period in his NHL debut. And I've got to tell you, it's an incredible prospect to watch and one of the most exciting call-ups we've seen in a very long time for the Nashville Predators. Uh, it's not the biggest call-up in Nashville Predators history. There were other players along the way. Rattleoff had this level of excitement when he was initially called up. Ryan Suter, Shea Weber, these are players that certainly had plenty of hype around them as they were coming up when they did finally uh, come up. But for Askarov coming up, he needs more time in the AHL. He needs more time to learn. He needs to gain more experience. He needs more starts. But what you saw from him tonight was the roller coaster ride that is Yaroslav Askarov. I covered every minute of development camp this year, so I got to watch him for four consecutive days, full practices, scrimmages, and games. And I've got to tell you, he is an exciting player, and his style is very very different. It's very wild. What you saw, his stick handling, his coming out of the net, his confidence in his own abilities. uh, It's going to scare the hell out of you watching him play at times, but it's also going to win whoever he plays for. If it is the Nashville Predators in the long run or somewhere else, it is going to win that team a lot of hockey games. Occasionally, it's going to lose them a hockey game, but you're going to have to learn to accept that with a player like Askarov, he plays in a certain semi-reckless, wide-open, free wild style and you saw some of that tonight and at times the Preds defense in front of them they seemed caught off guard momentarily and again that's something that players have to get used to playing together and there was certainly no way for the players to get adapted to each other with Askroft getting the emergency call but you saw the good the bad and, and some of the wild and the ugly uh, out there tonight but overall what a hell of a debut for a very very promising prospect in net for the Nashville Predators Uh, If Lankinen is just down sick, then you would assume within the next day or two, Askarov's going to be back in Milwaukee, probably getting uh, the next start as soon as possible down there. Lankinen will return to his spot on the roster behind UC Soros. Soros should get the next start net. But, man, that was exciting. That was so much fun to get the opportunity to watch that tonight. And I I was hoping for better results. But overall, it was a pretty remarkable performance for a first-ever NHL start. Definitely needs some more seasoning, but he's so, so young. Parsonen, a goal assist in this game. Two points, consistent effort and results. That's what you ask for when you have a big body first line center like Parsonen. He is absolutely great. We talk about him a lot here on the show, and he's just put up such consistency since he's come up. And the National Predators have become a more consistent and better team with him on it. The only player on the team tonight with two points, and he easily could have had more if Colton Sissons could have cashed in on the perfect feed that Parson and gave him, uh, then he easily would have had three points in this game. Parson, the consistency and the effort and the results, those are the three things I wanted to point out as we continue watching his growth and development. First, Field Forsberg continues to be red hot, picks up another goal in this game. Now 18 on the season, leads the Nashville Predators in total goals. Niederreiter with a goal, six shots on goal and three hits. Nito Niederreiter, another, we talked about McDonough being a pro's pro on the defensive side of things. On the forward side of things, Nito Niederreiter is a professional hockey player. He's an outstanding winger to watch out there. He goes about things in a very good, hard way. He competes on every shift. I never see him taking plays off. I never see him being out of the play. He's always going to the hard areas. 
always looking for that greasy goal. And that, that's one of the reasons that he has the number of goals in 13 that he has on the season. His first season with the National Predators. Again, McDonough and Niederreiter, very, very good, strong pickups for this National Predators team this year. Uh, about this game, overwhelmed in the first period. They never really recovered. It seemed maybe, maybe, maybe for 12 seconds in the second period that they had recovered. But then they went ahead and found themselves uh, behind again, taking more bad penalties and just overwhelmed. I wish that the National Predators would have had the effort tonight. I wish they could have flipped the efforts. I wish that tonight's effort would have happened in Toronto. So they would have just gotten run out of the rink. And tonight they would have played that excellent game uh, that they played last night for 58 plus minutes uh, against Toronto Maple Leafs because they would have blown that Montreal Canadiens team out of the rink. But the National Predators didn't have it in the first period. I don't know if they were lacking focus. I don't know if they were tired at the end of the road trip. The effort, the amount of shots on goal, the pressure in the third period would indicate to me that they weren't physically tired, but maybe they were mentally tired. Maybe they were ready to get home. You heard Alex Carrier, who got a lot of focus on the broadcast tonight because playing in his hometown, a lot of his friends, a lot of his family in the arena. Uh, we heard a lot from him on the broadcast, and, and he definitely indicated that he was tired. He was ready to get back to Nashville, ready to, ready to get back to his place. Didn't overemphasize that or anything, but you can just hear in the way it answers. you got to listen to the nuance. These players don't give up very much. After all, hockey players are all about not getting low, not getting high, putting pucks in deep, you know, going to the hard areas. That's about all you get out of a hockey player. So you got to listen for the nuance when they talk, and they will occasionally give something up like that. I think the team was tired mentally. I, I think that they were ready to get home, and they expected to come in tonight against a tough, uh, against a Montreal team that's had a tough season and is not very good in the standings and is overall not very good in the statistical metrics in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and they uh, they took them uh, not as seriously as they could in the first 20 minutes. And by the time they got the thing corrected, it was uh, too late. And on P.K. Subban night, that crowd, uh, they were electric. They were all about it, man. They were everything the Montreal Canadiens did that was good, uh, they were cheering for. And that had to make the players more fired up, more excited uh, to be a part of it. So uh, for the National Purs, they had an opportunity to close out the road trip to make it, uh, I believe I heard on the broadcast, to make it from a good road trip to a great road trip. Uh, and they failed to execute and they failed to do so in this one and I need to bring this point up one more time before we uh before we kick it over to the Renegades Jankowski appears to have lost his roster spot at least for at one night to Cole Smith coming back from in reserve uh Cole Smith was out since I uh, believe the Anaheim game here at the turn of the new year the beginning of 2023 and Jankowski took that bad penalty last night we speculated uh, that there was really no way that he was going to lose his job unless Cole Smith was ready to come back from injury and that's exactly what happened John Hines clearly displeased with Jankowski sitting him tonight and getting Cole Smith back in the lineup not that Cole Smith necessarily uh, added anything to the lineup but the message clearly sent to Jankowski take a bad penalty at the end of the game uh, and cost your team two points and uh, you're probably not going to get to skate in the next game Brian Mastin's got a whole lot of thoughts about this game as well about Askarov and other things he's stepping up taking analyst one role from on the forecheck.com he's got the more than the charts you need to see and more than the numbers you need to know but he is the one and only Brian Bastin. Thanks a lot, Charlie. I'm Brian Bastin here in the at the Renegade Analytics desk. And you'd think that, you know, we've had a pretty good streak of talking about some good things that Nashville has done on, on this road trip. And unfortunately, one thing did kind of overshadow the debut of Yaroslav Askarov, who is the youngest predator to uh, goaltender to play in the NHL. Um, not about Yusuf Parsonen um, picking up another goal and an assist tonight, which looks great. Um, unfortunately, we got to focus on the one thing that we've talked about a lot, but not a lot recently, and that is the problem of penalties, and that is the topic of tonight's One Big Stat. Now, Nashville finished with, um, had multiple penalties this day, giving Montreal three power play chances on the game, of which two of those, Cole Caulfield got goals, including the game winner, and Nashville was never really able to re recover from that. On the opposite side of things, Nashville went 0 for 3 on their power plays, and Unfortunately, that's kind of a, a bad stat for them because this is just the second time in f the last 15 games for the Montreal Canadiens where they have um, where they have not given up a, a power a power play goal um, against their from their opponents. So Nashville's only the second team to not score on the power play against Montreal, who is a pretty bad team this year. It is Nashville's fourth straight game without a power play goal, and that's their 22nd. A game of the season out of 41 over half without a goal on the man advantage also it is the 32nd game 
this season where they have spent four or more minutes shorthanded. Not great. And one thing we saw again tonight, a problem that they've, they've had pretty much all season, is they took their seventh too many men penalty, the bench minor. Um, that ties them for third in the NHL for the most too many men penalties, just two behind the leader. So a lot of what we've seen from Nashville on this road trip is this is a team that with decent goaltending, they're able to shut down defensive, uh, defensive quality just a little bit, and the offense can come and save this team if they show up. And unfortunately, the offense didn't seem to show up until late in the game tonight. Once again, we come across this problem with Nashville Predators fans where if their goaltender does not play out of their mind, Nashville has a pretty low chance of winning, and that, that held true again tonight. They'll, they, once they're done with the road trip, now I'm glad. I'm pretty sure they're going to be happy to be back home because they've got a whole slew of home games coming up. But Nashville's going to have to figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to be able to create more discipline. And hopefully John Hines will continue to work on that because this is a problem that has been evident all season but masked a little bit by excellent goaltending. And that's tonight's one big stat. Charlie? Stripe Digital Solutions is another great partner of the Renegades of Puck, and I sure do appreciate everything Stripe Digital Solutions does for us here in the trenches. Check out their work, stripedigitalsolutions.com, or online, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You see the crest that is on the jersey right here. You see the logo on the wall behind me, the website, renegadesofpuck.com, our social media and brand building plan. All of that is managed by and through Stripe Digital Solutions. We could not succeed on any level in the current current world the way it functions without a strong digital partner and stripe digital solutions is the strongest digital partner i urge and encourage each and every one of you to reach out to brandy and start the conversation today i think that my website is fantastic my logos my graphics i think everything is wonderful and that is because i have visions and ideas and then they are whittled down by stripe digital solutions into something that actually is coherent and makes sense on the screen they do incredible work and i encourage each and every one of you check out Stripe Digital Solutions. Uh, when it comes to the box score, there's a little bit more to talk about than there was in the previous game against Toronto, but again, not a whole lot. Phil Forsberg, goal scorer, Nino Niederreiter, and Parson also goal scores for the National Predators in the assist category. Parson, the only player with two points, picks up an assist. Matt Duchesne also picks up an assist and two assists from the defensive side of things from Ekholm and from the captain, Roman Yossi. Shots on goal leaders. Phil Forsberg had six, Nino Niederreiter had six shots shots on net. Captain Romeo C had five. When it comes to blocked shots, Fabro and Yossi four apiece. Colton Sissons had three blocked shots in this game. When it comes to the physical side of things and it comes to the hits, Tanner Janot had five hits and also Cole Smith had five hits in this game. A light night physical play overall from the defenseman. Fabro two hits, Luzon one hit. That's it. Only three total hits by the Nashville Predators defense and it was certainly a hard-hitting physical Montreal Canadiens team they have some real real big heavy hitters on that roster and in that lineup your time on ice leader second night of back-to-backs and there's Ryan Johansson going for 2001 in total time on ice have not seen Ryan Johansson north of 20 minutes in a very very long time overall the rest of his stat line three hits he did take one penalty in this game but it was a matching minor 411 in power play time on ice for ryan johansson overall time on ice leader for the game no surprise here the captain roman yossi 29 11 in total time skated askarov again was not even put on the box score because when i went to print the box score out they had not yet been able to upload any of his graphics or anything so askarov wasn't even on on the official game sheet when I initially printed it out for the show. Askarov, 31 out of 35 in his NHL debut. And again, I, I thought he did some incredible things. Yeah, he did some things. And again, this is going to be the wild ride with Askarov. He did some amazing things. Then he did some pretty good things. Then he did some things that I was like, whoa, what are you doing? And then he scared the hell out of me a couple of times. Uh, and then some uh, other things happened. Man, it's not... It's not the same as watching Pekka Rene, who was very calm, very smooth, very collected. This is a very, very different kind of ride with Askarov. But it was so much fun to get to see him in that game and so much fun to get to cover him. Uh, that does it for the box score. That does it for the numbers. So we'll be back. We'll wrap this thing up in just a second with our final thoughts. 
I'm Crazy Charlie Sonia, captain of the Renegades of Puck. I'm also tired of the cold, tired of the dark, and tired of being landlocked. I'm also willing to bet that I'm not the only one who could use some sun, fun, and time in paradise with friends. That's exactly why I called our great friend Pete Weber. He told me, call ships and trips travel, and now we're all going to Mexico. That's right, Renegades of Puck, July 15th to the 20th of 2023. Dreams Vallarta Resort in Puerto Vallarta is the destination to hang with Pete Weber in paradise. To join Pete and the Renegades of Puck in Puerto Vallarta, go to www.shipsandtripstravel.com. That's ship and trips travel.com and just click on the ROP on vacation tab. Don't stay landlocked. Join the Renegades of Puck in Paradise July 15th to the 20th, 2023 in Porto Vallarta. Pete Weber, the Renegades of Puck and you. It's time to ditch those skates for flip flops and fun in the sun. Six out of ten points for the National Purse on this five-game road trip. It had the opportunity and the potential to be great, but it ended up just being good and the ending was kind of unsatisfactory the National Predators got off to such a good start on this road trip victories over Carolina in a record-setting performance a victory over the Washington Capitals two very good teams two tough teams to go in and beat on the road then a victory over the other centers had things all set up and then suddenly a late high sticking penalty against the Maple Leafs torpedoes that potential for gaining at least one point and then tonight the Nashville Predators just lacking the mental focus to go ahead and complete this road trip so only six out of ten points gaining the first six losing the last four and anybody going into this road trip would have said six out of ten points would have been a successful road trip I'm sticking to that and saying it was a successful road trip I'm just saying it was a good road trip not a great road trip for the Nashville Predators. They left an opportunity out there at the rink tonight against the Montreal Canadiens, splitting the regular season series against Montreal. Now heading back home, a significant amount of home games coming up at Bridgestone Arena. So it just wasn't quite as enjoyable there at the end. P.K. Subban night. I just wanted to close the show by talking about P.K. Subban for just a moment. What a great uh, ceremony that was before the game. It was great to see P.K. Subban uh, again. I covered uh, every game that P.K. Subban played here as a national partner in his three seasons and you know what? Uh, for all the things that people want to say about P.K. Subban, I always found him to be very enjoyable, very engaging, and honestly a delight. Never had an issue, never had a problem, uh, and never had the, all that much access to him, but when I did did. Uh, he was easy to work with. And I mean, you know, look at the personality. He's easy to get along with. He's a character. To see P.K. Subban back out there on the ice tonight in Montreal, see the way the crowds react to him, that was very nice. It was very special. Uh, it was great to see him. I wish him good luck in the future with his career. I hope he gets into broadcasting, as so many people hated him for attempting to do at the end of his Nashville Predators time. And I just want to go back very quickly and just remind everybody for what negativity you may have towards P.K. Subban, wherever that's rooted in, whatever that comes from, please consider and recall, before P.K. Subban got here and after P.K. Subban left, you can go ahead and look at those seasons for yourselves. You can look at those records for yourselves, but I would just like to point out this particular fact about the three seasons P.K. Subban was here. I believe it's the greatest three-year stretch in Nashville Predators franchise history. The Nashville Predators won two two Central Division titles. They went to a Stanley Cup final and they won a President's Trophy for the Nashville Predators. That is incredible. They had never won a division title before. They had certainly never made it even to a conference final before P.K. Subban and they had never won a President's Trophy. The time with P.K. Subban should always be remembered and reflected upon with great, great delight and fun. The National Predators were two games away from defeating the Pittsburgh Penguins and defeating the and winning the Stanley Cup. If P.K. Subban's antics against Sidney Crosby in that Stanley Cup final had gone on to secure the National Predators a victory, they would be remembered for all time on the sports landscape in this town. The fan base, sometimes fickle, forgets just how good things truly were when P.K. Subban was a Nashville predator. 
that's going to do it for this show. That was great game to watch, great game to see, and it's always fun to see the crowd in Montreal and the way that they react to things and see P.K. Subban back out there on the rink. I hope he continues doing great things for charity, and I hope that well, we continue having him come back to visit Nashville from time to time. Uh, he deserves he deserves to get those flowers from the Nashville Predators fans. Again, I think sometimes you guys forget just how good those three seasons really, truly were for this National Predators team and for this city as a hockey organization. He was also a big part of the All-Star Weekend here. Never forget that. Never forget how important his being a part of the National Predators franchise helped elevate the franchise to another level, at least as far as the media was concerned. For Brian Bassanich and every one of the renegades of Puck, I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. I sure do appreciate each and every one of you jumping in the trenches. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a subscription, do all that stuff, and stick taps love and respect to the Full Press NHL Network and the Full Press coverage. I appreciate each and every one of you over there and how much you are helping push the website and push the show and push everything that we are doing over here. So thank you guys so much. Thanks to the Full Press Predators coverage. We have been able to eclipse a million replays down loads and interaction in the year 2022 and we are going to far surpass that in 2023 they're incredible digital partners and we sure are happy to be a part of that network so again thank you guys so much and stick taps love and respect to each and every one of you out there